Hey guys, Ethereal Light Art here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel and you like light painting, long exposure photography, or creativity, you're in the right place. Please subscribe and like, share with your artist friends, leave me a comment, I do appreciate them. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Welcome to the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? We have Ben Woods from Adelaide, a phenomenal landscape photographer, an amazing light painter. Ben from Adelaide, how are you? Mate, fantastic. A little bit chilly here in Adelaide today, but uh, nestled up inside, it's, uh, it's nice and cozy and warm and uh, pleased to talk to you, mate. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. It's great to have you on the show. You know, you've been inspiring to me and others. Um, I honestly, this is why we do the podcast. Um, I love your art and I don't know who you are as a person. And I think just off camera, we just talked about that's the reason why we do the podcast is to really get to know these wonderful artists out there. And I can't say how happy I am to have you on the show. Oh, thank you, mate. And um, I think uh, others have touched on it. Uh, the title of the show, I think that's a cracker. Absolute legend. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I don't think I say that every time I go out light painting. And um, I don't know how many torches I've lost in my time. Oh. And um, yeah. so that, that's really funny. So it's great. It's a great title. And I've got to say, um, I have watched a few of your few of your podcasts. I'm slowly catching up on them. And, um, yeah, the inspiration that it's giving me just hearing, um, hearing what other people um, are doing um, and learning about them as well. Um, that's been just been absolutely inspirational. Uh, we, we're in crazy times, as you know, and uh, so yeah, so I don't don't really hang around socials too much, but over the last six weeks or so, I've probably uh, probably hung out a little bit more than uh, than normal. So hopefully uh, hopefully that can continue. It's, um, yeah, it's great. It's great to see what others are doing. It's fantastic. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this has been an amazing project for me um, as the host. I get to actually have these uh, more intimate conversations, more connection uh, to the community and in the community and honestly for the community. Um, and it was something I just honestly I was on a hike. I was actually uh, I was on a hike way up in the mountains and I just kind of an idea came to me and I was like, you know what? I don't think there's a light painting podcast out there. Um, and I want to get to know these artists. I want to know more about them and what makes them tick and what inspires them and how are they creative. And, and it's been an amazing project. I'm so glad you're a part of it now. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, want to, uh, I want to ask you about this picture because this picture uh, in particular is how I found you. Can you tell me the scenario? <clears throat> Where were you? Um, who did the light painting and, and yada, yada, yada. Tell us about, tell us about that. Yeah. It's this guy right um, here. Mate, that was, um, that's actually not my image, I've got to say. Okay. Um, that's a, a lady called uh, Fiona. Yeah. Um, pretty sure she resides in Sydney. Um, yeah. However, that was at a workshop. Um, we did a, a Australian uh, light painting tour. Um, so that was sort of that was in Sydney at a little a uh, little funky um, funky art space that we ran the workshop in and uh, so yeah so you can imagine at a workshop you got sort of eight or eight or so cameras in the group all sort of at different angles um, so this particular angle um, was posted and I asked uh, Fiona if um, if I could uh, have a copy of it which she sent through a high res. Um, which was brilliant, um, but mate, that that really captured the whole tour, um, and how it left us all feeling. Uh, we had Paylor Teth come over and Patrick Rashon um, come over, 
and we had a great crew here um, in Australia, Dennis Smith, Rob Turney, um, Alex Kess um, from Sydney. So those guys really were the were the front runners to, to do all the organising. And then you had uh, myself, um, Aaron Martin. Um, uh, who else was there? Uh, there was a few others there, um, all come along for the ride. And um, the, that image, that's that's pretty much what uh, what light painting has uh, has done for me over the last five years. Really, it's just just really uh, really captured my soul. And um, and that image in particular is um, that is a big heavy glass bottle and uh, Dennis is uh, Dennis is the one doing the light painting and we did three takes and the first one he was about three inches away from my chin and I'm laying there and I said no nah, man get like within an inch of my chin and he's a little bit nervous and I said no nah, you've got to get within an inch of my chin as you're swinging that thing man you just got to do it and he goes oh but what if I hit you and I said as long as the shutter's open it doesn't matter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mate, and that was the result. That was uh, that was from Fiona's um, camera. Um, that angle was uh, yeah, it was perfect. But um, the light, the light coming out of that glass bottle was just phenomenal. And the bottle was just sitting there, you know, it was just on a shelf. And um, so yeah, we just put the torch through it and swung it around, and that was the result. So that was our little collab for the uh, for the workshop. It was really good, really cool, really good fun. Oh man, I mean, this picture is so powerful. I mean, I'm trying to get my finger. What, what, what are you, what is this, a, what is this emotion? Can you, can you describe the emotion that's coming out of you and look at the, look at the proximity that Dennis did get to you coming right out of your heart center? I mean, that is like, yeah. wow. Well, yeah, it was, uh, that was 10 days of um, pretty much no sleep. Um, and 10 days of just creative flow um, is the best way to describe it. So it's, um, yeah, so that was, I'm pretty sure that was like the second or last night or something like that. And um, so it was just like, Mah! you know, that sort of emotion. And it was just, yeah, it was, um, it was just all happening. And uh, when, I, when I saw that on, uh, on Fiona's uh, Instagram, um, I actually started crying. It was just... Uh, it was our last night that we were in Sydney, and um, I saw that pop up, and I'm going, "That's it. That's what it's all about, you know. It's, that's how light painting can capture you." And uh, and I think that still rings true today, and that's why it's still my profile pic. Oh, it's an excellent choice, mate. I, I couldn't. I, you've inspired me. I, I didn't buy this chair. Uh, <laughs> I didn't buy this chair specifically for this photo, um, oh. but I have done. Yes. This is, uh, this, I do love this chair. It is my thinking chair, actually. Um, I think everyone has a little spot in their home or their, their nest that they, they like to go to. Uh, but I saw, that, I saw that picture immediately. I'm not sure if you know about the, it's a 1980s Bose speaker commercial where the guy's sitting in the chair with sunglasses on, and I think it's him, uh, Lamp, and he's just getting blown away by the speakers. His hair is just like blowing back and his cheeks are going big like the wind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that one? Do you know what I'm talking about? I do know the one, yeah. Yep, I do know it. Yep. Love it. Yeah, I love it. It's so inspirational. And then I actually I actually put my boss lady in, in the chair and thought of you when I, when I did this one. <laughs> That's gold. So uh, that one picture has obviously inspired, I'm sure, many, many, many others across uh, across the the world. Really, on tour with Dennis Smith and the team. Uh, now, is this is this the LPA uh, LPWA tour? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So yeah, we um, we organised a series of um, free community um, events as well as paid workshops. Um, and then um, we started off uh, started off in Melbourne. Um, so uh, Rob Turney over there, he organised us to be in the Melbourne Museum, um, which was just cool, you know. That was just magic. Um, and then we came back across here to Adelaide um, in the flower shed, uh, which is just a massive space with a big mural at one end. Um, that was brilliant. Um, and then we skipped across to Sydney and Alex Kess, um, Kessner. Um, he um, he organised that little art space out at Redfern, 
um, which is just the funkiest little spot. It was fantastic. It was really cool. We did a, did a heap of little Sydney walks, you know, um, getting the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House and all that sort of stuff um, with the community events over there. So it was a great time. We were basically living in each other's pockets for 10 days and uh, with uh, Paola and, um, and Patrick. Um, so everyone toured around together and everyone was um, cruising around as a group. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good times. So it was fantastic. So hopefully, hopefully we could do that again. Um, I'm not very well world travelled, but um, it is on my bucket list to do a little bit of touring, and uh, might be a long term thing at this stage. But um, that's okay. You've got to have goals. So hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> no, absolutely, Ben. I, I love it. I love it, mate. If we could just, if you could push a button, uh, spin the globe, and just teleport, where where are you going to go first? What if it was unlimited funds? You have unlimited funds to light paint. Mate, I I think. With all honesty, the amount of inspiration that I get out of, um, I mean, it's a global thing, but the guy, the amount of guys that are in America and Europe, um, it would have to be one of those two. Um, so I would have to come and visit because uh, bang for buck, mate, it's not about the location. I think it's about the people. And, um, mate, if I could get to either, either the Americas or, uh, or Europe or somewhere like that um, and just catch up with so many people that I've sort of followed online for, you know, I'm only young, only young in this light painting game. It's only been five years, but it's, um, there's so many people that have been around a lot longer and um, they inspire so many people. at so, so many different levels that um, you just want to go and flick some lights with them. It's yeah, that's all you want to do. So it's good. I couldn't agree more, you know, and, and one of those guys, you know, Patrick, who you mentioned, who you met and toured with, uh, huge inspiration to me um obviously you are really into light blading i'd like to talk to you honestly about your light blading i think it's fantastic um i'm also a light blader um but i haven't had uh, honestly that many true light bladers on the show um and ben would you say that's one of your favorite light painting styles is is blading for sure for, for yeah absolutely for for a lot of reasons as well um it's um, it's a way for me to to um, get my body moving um, foremost. That that's number one. Um, I've got a um, I've got a pretty bad back, so it it takes me a few hours in the morning to get moving. It's it's a muscular injury that uh, just yeah it's I've got to live with it. Um, but yeah, blading, it, it, mate one week into my light painting journey and I'm making my own blades, you know? So, um, yeah, that, that's a, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> can, can you. Can you talk to us about this image in particular? Like, uh, yeah. what, what caused the color? What were you, yeah. what were you thinking? What part of the warm up or what part of your movement were you, can you trace, uh, can you just walk through? Yeah. Just tell us about this. So that that, um, that particular image, it looks like it's done in the studio, yeah. um, but it's literally one metre away from our campsite out in the bush, um, about two and a half metres behind there, there's a couple of massive big gum trees, and out further from that is the mighty Murray River that dissects through our, our, our wonderful country. So it's all just camera settings. So um, that was ultra bright torch and it was literally plonk the camera on a tripod. Um, I was away camping with mates that don't do any light um, painting at all. Um, they have a camera on their phone and that's it. So, um, and it was a mate that I hadn't caught up with for a little while. So we were away camping together and he got, got pretty interested in the light painting. I said, oh, I'll set something up and, and show you. So mate, that that is literally almost a brown gel, um, giving that yellow colour. Um, so that's a little tip for you. The the best golden colours actually come from almost brown gels, um, and just a normal normal clear gel. Um, I think from memory it was one pass with a full um, full power, and then a pass back on strobe. Um, and in post, it was just uh, dark in the shadows a touch because you could just see the trees behind a little bit. Uh, crop it, and she was good to go. So 
he, uh, my friend saw that on the back of the camera. He's gone, you're joking. You know, like, how, how does that work? And it's become one of my favourites for that reason. And, um, yeah, I love it. I love that photo. I'm trying to convince my wife that that needs to be in a massive print um, in our house. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, but I've got to be honest with you, mate, I, uh, I haven't got a single photo of mine I've ever taken printed. Um, <laughs> I, not something that I, I do. Um, but that one there is, um, that's a firm favourite. Um, I need to uh, need to print that. I think it's uh, so. Yeah, when my wife sees this, she'll uh, she'll say, "Well, why haven't you printed it?" And that's just yeah, it's the way it goes. It's the way. So. It is. It is. You know, and and honestly, um, I had a really hard time printing my first pieces uh, as well. And I think as we oh. mature as artists and we become more comfortable with that notion. Um, I think it's a huge step and I, and I would highly encourage you to invest in that because that's something that you can honestly look at uh, as you walk by it, no matter where you put it in your house, if you put it somewhere special, obviously it deserves somewhere special. That could only inspire you personally more than anything, anyone else, because that's your, it's your piece and that, and that you deserve to have that reward. Um, it's my birthday coming up. And so I usually do one piece for my birthday. That's, that's my, that's my one thing I do, but. <laughs> yeah, mate, I, um, I, I've got to be honest. Um, what you see online and this happens so often that what you see online isn't what, um, what happens in real life. I've, um, I suffer quite a bit of fear. Um, I tend to, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's a real challenge for me even to do a post on social media. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll post and I'll walk away because, um, you know, um, but, yeah, printing stuff and hanging it on, hanging it on your wall, it, um, it's the next step. Um, you know, I don't, um, I don't even have a website for my gear. I've got a landing page at the moment with not much info on it, and um, it's been like that for four years. And it's been like that for four years because I have uh, my fear and uh, my anxiety around taking that step. Um, just just keeps compounding and uh, but yeah I think that's I think that's a pretty typical um, the more people you talk to about that I think it, um, a lot of people suffer that in different forms um, but yeah something that I personally you need to yeah you as well yeah um, and there you go it's um, mate it's crushing it's um, you know what you got to do you know how to fix it but you uh, you just keep going and that's that's all part of the story you know it's um, you just got to keep keep pursuing it, keep doing the art for you, and, uh, and the rest will come. The rest yeah, will happen. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, you know, and, and that's that's what's going to be, it's like the tortoise and the hare, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. you do it for you, you'll, you'll have an infinite supply of energy, you'll have an infinite supply of creativity, you'll have an yeah. infinite supply of fun and silliness and all the beautiful yeah. things about this art form um and I, I love that because i i couldn't agree more um i it's something that as you post and be be more social in those platforms um you know it's it, they're based on popularity uh in a lot of ways and so that can be that can be a detriment that can be something that is a hindrance uh and i don't necessarily know that instagram is the best platform um i don't know it's something that we all deal with. You're not alone. Yep. Um, it's it's just it's just yeah. part of us. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I I could delete my social accounts tomorrow. Like that's for me. It's um, not about followers and likes and all that sort of stuff. It's a platform for me to get inspiration from um, mm. more than anything. Um, that's what it's for me. It. I, I sort of look at social media like um, traversing through a, a, a cow field. Um, you know, you can look around and you can go, oh, look at all this beauty. It's fantastic. And sun's setting over there and it's, it's great. But when you're, when you're walking through that cow field, you watch where you're walking and you don't step in the bullshit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Social media, you've got to treat the same. You have a look around. Look at the good things on social media. Avoid the crap on the ground. And yep. um, and that that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I I try 
my social media, I'll, um, I'll vent a little bit um, politically, like once every couple of months, I seem to have this thing and go, oh man, bang, and you, you get it out of your system because it's your opinion and all that sort of stuff. But you gotta got to be real with your, with your social. Um, you can't live a false life through your socials. It's just, it's just not going to work for you. Um, my, my other business is a handyman business. So I'm, I'm, um, Monday to Friday, um, for the last seven years, that's that's been my other other business, and mate, all up on both sites, on my photography uh, Facebook site and uh, and my handyman site is like a total of just I don't think it's 500 likes or something on both of them combined or something. Yeah. But I've never spent a single cent on advertising, so it's all word of mouth for the whole everything that I do. So you got to be you got to be honest. You got to have integrity, and um, sometimes that doesn't shine through um, through social media. And um, got to be yourself, whether you're on social media or in real life. And that's the way it is. Um, so I might go a week without posting anything at all. Um, that's you know I'm I'm a I'm a shocking introvert, and um, I sway between uh, like this. <laughs> here's a funny story for you. Um, I've been preparing for this for the last week and a half mentally. So, <laughs> yeah, man, it, you know what? It's not easy. Um, and you know, something that this quarantine actually uh, helped me through is doing more live, live, yeah. actually live, not only light painting live and showing the back of the camera. This is exactly what we just did together. When you are live, like this podcast is not heavily edited. In fact, and that might not be edited at all. Um, it's authentic, and I think that's that, that's what people are gravitating towards is the authenticity. It's not hiding behind your social image, or it's not hiding behind a false identity. Um, you know, and I and I and I I'm very spiritual about this art form. I I don't like to post process many of my photos because I feel like it's honestly kind of hurting that image and it's a creation that came out of your soul and so the more you manipulate it uh sometimes that can yeah, you know, for me that's that's, that's adverse yeah. Oh, yeah yeah strips that whole meaning away from the image yeah absolutely well i um i do basic um adjustments yeah, um me too nothing mate nothing is um nothing is ever um ever taken out of the image or put um, put in that it wasn't there. Um, I should raw. Yeah. You know? yeah. You should. You should. You've got it. You've got yeah. it. Yeah. But cameras, cameras are, um, camera technology is getting better, but you've got to boost colour sometimes. The camera gets a bit confused by colour. You've got to, got to play with the adjustments just a little bit. Um, so that's all, that's all we do. Um, yeah. but yeah, interesting what you say about with the, with the COVID, with the quarantine and stuff. Um, I've been running, um, Zoom classes, um, once a week on Zoom and, um, mate, I, I gotta be honest, I probably, probably wouldn't have said yes to this interview if I hadn't taken that step and, and been able to do that. So the last six weeks has been a real learning curve for me to be a little bit more comfortable. I've done a little bit, um, in the past, but um yeah now i'm a little bit more comfortable with it it's um yeah so that that's a good thing that's come out of it for me you've got to look at the glass half full situation and um so yeah so that that's really cool so hopefully i'll uh, i'll be able to continue it and i don't sort of go back into my shell like i was <laughs> you know uh, uh, yeah i i'm so happy that you said yes to this you know when you said yes i was so happy i was like yes i don't have in any other way, honestly, to get to know you as an artist and let the community get to know you as an artist. And I think this is this is amazing. Mate, um, I've got another blade uh, shot here. Um, yep. And this one is this one's a super colorful one. Can you yep. can you walk us through this? And then I know you touched real real quick about the speed of the blade and how yep. you use it for movement. And yep. and I want to maybe uh, extrapolate on that a little bit because I also agree that, you know, these blades, these Kyo blades, any blades were designed for movement and speed. And oh, totally. anyone that doesn't say that isn't quite utilizing them to their highest potential in a way. 
So, so yeah. can you can you speak more on that? Um, yeah, really. You, um, my images, I can tell exactly what sort of frame of mind with my body I was in when I look at my images. So that was a that was a pretty good day. Um, you can see there's nice curves and stuff like that. Um, the bigger the the bigger the round and rounder the curve with me, the the worse I am with my body. If I've got really nice flicks and, and twists and all that sort of stuff in the light blading, um, I'm having a good day. Um, so that one's that one's about an average day. The the gold looks like it's um, that's a sanded blade. Um, so I've sanded the face of it, and there'll be an orange gel um, in the coyo to get the colour. And then the aqua one that looks like it might be partially sanded, um, and that would have an aqua gel on there as well and it's, I reckon there's a little bit of purple or it might be just the white coming through the iris as well but yeah no that's um I use a lot of um a lot of blues purples um a lot of pinks mm. and um and that's all that's all for my wife she <laughs> I, I love blue I love blues and aquas but uh, the purples and pinks and all that sort of stuff um that's all for her she uh, she loves those colors so I try. I tend to sort of magnetise back to those those um, those four colours, um, and then swap um, use complementary colours. So with the aqua there, I've got the gold and sort of vice versa. So yeah, I've got I've got a, um, a light panel. So it's a ceiling LED panel that I've just got loose on the floor, 1200 by 600, and I use that for my Zoom classes. Um, but I also stick all my gels and stuff in, in colour sequence. So I think at the moment there's about eight or nine different colour combinations. So um, that's probably about six months worth of blading <laughs> on it at the moment. So you just, yeah, I set up a set of blades and just see what I can do with it and just keep adding bits and pieces to the blading um, and then just see what I can come, uh, see what comes from it. And uh, yeah, away we go. It's good. I love it. I love it. Now, and and are you when you, we're talking movement here? Uh, I love mm -hmm. the color scheme because a lot a lot of people actually. Uh, well, I hope more people would consider color scheme and color combinations when they are matching to their environment. If it's in the studio, you don't have anything to match to. But say you're in a field full of purple tulips. I mean, you right. should plan accordingly on what would go well with purple tulips. Uh, and I think that really helps the image. And I, you've done an amazing job here. As far as movement goes, uh, are you moving always in one direction? Do you start at the left side and go all the way to the right? Do you go back and forth? Do you use both hands? <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes I have a tool in each hand. Like it just depends on my <laughs> energy levels. But I'm left-handed, so generally I start to the left and go to the right. That, that seems to be the way that I do it. Um, and most of the time I fall into a trap. I um, tend to use the left hand being that, you know, positive on the left hand quite a bit. But it's actually quite fun to try and just have a night. You tuck your left hand in the, into the back pocket and just try and use the right hand because it, you need to need to be um, equal left and right. Um, otherwise, yeah, it, um, it, it's a lot easier in life as well um, that you can do things with your right and your left. I've always been a bit, bit sort of both ways. But, it, um, yeah, you've got to sort of practice that as well. Um, I do um, do quite a bit of martial arts. That's what the Zoom lessons have been for. Um, so the blading is, a, is, is, yeah, a lot of martial arts comes into that. And um, yeah, the, when I when I discovered Patrick Rashon, I discovered him discovered him because I Google searched light painting and martial arts, and bang, his number one come up. And what's this? What's this light painting Carter that he's doing? So away we went and. Um, sort of had a bit of a look in, in at that and I'm going, okay, this is cool. This could work. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I think it was about three three days into discovering light painting. I was already buying acrylic and cutting out shapes and going, right, this is, how do we do this? And yeah, it was quite, uh, quite funny. So, so yeah, a lot of that transpires across to the blading now. Um, and uh, yeah, get that movement happening, and uh, yeah, um, breathing as well. Breathing's a big thing um, while I'm blading. It's um, yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, most of my blading's about six, about five, six seconds or thereabouts. 
So there's a lot of lot of movement in that time, but um, I do a, a do a bit of a breathing exercise usually for about six um, seconds. So um, fill the lungs up. So it takes six seconds to fill your lungs. You hold it for six seconds and then you breathe out for six seconds. So it's um so it's as I'm breathing out, I'll start to shatter and light lay. And um, so it it becomes meditative. It, it you start, you know, start getting into that process. So you've got basically 12 seconds. So you're breathing in for six, you're holding it for six, then you start blading. And um, and that that's been working quite well for me. It's a good stress reliever. It's um, doing that. It oxygenates your blood um, in your body and it relieves stress. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it um, it it works quite well. Um, it's always relaxing. But um, yeah, I try and try and if I can, I try and do a little bit of blading in the morning as well as a bit of bit of the martial arts to get moving. Um, doesn't always happen some mornings you just can't face it but um usually two probably two times a week i'm i'm doing something for sure yeah so yeah good times amazing mate i mean this is this is pure gold i mean i haven't had anyone on the show yet talking about breathing um something that i am very very into as far as my meditative practice which is very intertwined with my my art my light painting um and often i am doing very, very long uh, exposures as far as like illustrations uh, with drawing. And I'm drawing in a full actually animated scene, which takes a really long time. And so I'm often holding my breath. And the model, if there's a model involved, sh my girlfriend mainly, she's like, remember to breathe, remember to breathe. Um, and so something that I think would be very beneficial for the audience and the community is just even before you start light painting, not only during, but before, especially take, take five to 10 minutes and just maybe sit in yeah. silence and just really focus on your breath. And six seconds is a beautiful amount of time. I mean, it's a pretty long time to, to breathe in and it's a pretty long time to breathe out. Um, soften the corners at each one of those and really calm your body down. And then you can actually start hammering out things like this, um, which is not easy. I mean, this is a workout. I, I'm so glad to hear that you're actually using art and martial arts and 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 exercise to heal yourself. I mean, this is this is pure gold, mate. Pure gold. Um, it's um, you can get a real sweat up. Like, um, some of the stuff that um, Patrick does, it's um, it's just absolutely. There you go. <laughs> uh, that was a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff that Patrick does is um, is pretty full on. Like it's um, it's a workout, man. It's a workout. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can you can you explain what's going on here? I mean, obviously we can see, but um, this is a bit of an old one, isn't it? This is one of the first, one of the beginning ones, or? Um, yeah, that was um, that was during the tour as well. Okay. Um, so that was the uh, um, that was during the Adelaide leg. Um, so that's the flash, and that murals up the one end of the shed, and it's just beautiful. You can bounce light off of it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, Rob Turney and Aaron Martin, um, I think it was, um, forgive me guys if that was wrong, but, um, those guys were helping me with that. And, um, I just said to them, oh, I've got a bit of an idea that we can try out tomorrow while we're messing around, you know? So there was just us there, um, with the crew. So I had the music going and I went in, went and got my karate gi on and uh got in my gear and i said all right this is the idea and and that's actually a one of our kata that we actually do um as part of our martial arts called tensho but with a blade you know so it's uh yeah so i just sort of experimented with that it was great fun it was awesome i love it i love this one i love that you're having fun your everything about this image is amazing uh yeah it is so good and i, I love to see I love to see silliness, you know I mean? The re one of the big reasons why I like paint, uh, period, is just that I can access my inner child. I mean, I, I just go back to being silly. It's like the first time somebody put a crayon or a marker and a piece of paper in front of me and it's like, what do you want to draw? And you're just like, I don't know, I'm just gonna draw whatever I want. And something comes out, you know, and, and it might not be good all the time and that's okay. Um, that's totally okay. It's like, it's part of you and you're doing it. And that's the fun, you know, it's the, it's the journey. It's not really the destination. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think um, 
I think you gotta got to have fun with anything that you do in life. Um, if you're not having fun, it, it's probably not worth it. Um, and that, that goes down to work life as well. Um, if work's not fun, what's the point, you know? It's like you got to find got to find a job that you job that you do in life that, that you get satisfaction from um, and fun. Um, it's um, you know it's it's the old mouse mouse on the wheel type thing. Do you do you do you jump on that and do you start running faster, hoping that you're going to get there, or do you just jump off of the wheel and and just go yeah cool I might get up there and I might not I'm going to go over here today and you know. It's yeah. Um, I I spent a bit of time. Um, I'm diesel mechanic by trade. Had the had the back injury. Went away from that. Um, ended up in in a bit of a corporate world. Um, and the job was pretty high pressure. Um, pretty high stress. And um, it just about killed me. Um, I um I met a lot of a lot of good people there. Um, working at that place. Um, really really good team. But um it it wasn't life you know and uh i think you need to step back from that i ended up getting redundancy um which was one of the best things that that has ever happened to me to be to be brutally honest Mm -hmm. um stepped away from there and uh, started my own thing and um and away we went and uh i got that flexibility of of managed to get work-life balance um I'm not coming home in the dark um, anymore. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's not not all you know beer and skittles. You got to work at it every, every day, but um, but life's good, you know. It's, it's um, I'm a lot better person now than what I was seven eight years ago, and um, and I think a big part of that has come from getting that creative side out and and exploring the photography in general, but mainly light painting. Um, it's, uh, you know, I only discovered photography about 20 odd years ago and enjoyed taking shots and started exploring all that. But I think, um, as you grow up, that's ah, beautiful. I love that one. It's, um, that's in the middle of the outback in New South Wales on a, on a private property and, uh, on a, uh, on a, a, a cattle station, um, went up there to help friends uh clean out some of their gear they had a couple of caravans and trucks up there so we went out there for a week and uh mate that's in the middle of a cow paddock just this little billabong and uh yeah the way we went is yeah it was awesome but you gotta gotta have days like that you know like take a week off of your life and and go out bush with your mates and and just enjoy um enjoy nature and um and that's a, that's a big part of it um, I think your creativity uh, creativity gets crushed out of you as you grow up. Um, you go through school, and you know, you, as a two three year old, you can you can make a great fortress out of a sheet and a couple of pillows. But what happens? What happens from there? You either you either keep the creativity or it gets squashed out of you. Whether that's through the education system or because you've got set curriculum or through your work life because you go to do a particular job. But if you can manage to keep the creativity, then I think as people I think you're more open minded. Um you got got uh you can look at things a little bit differently and I think that's the most important thing. And, uh, and that comes from the creativity I think. Um, I, I'm only only new only new to it, mate. And like I said, like it's um, the inspiration and from that I get from the creativity from um, a lot of the more experienced guys that have been around a lot longer than what I have. That feeds me. Um, so, mate, I, I yeah, I just like to pass that pass that down, whether that's to my kids or someone who's just brought a camera. And they were, what's this light painting stuff or how do I get more out of my camera? You just got to pass what you know yeah. onto something. Otherwise, it's, you know, light painting as a as an art form will, uh, will slowly whittle away. Um, so, yeah, as artists, we've got to be prepared to teach others. And I think that's important. I couldn't agree more. Um, are we looking at the next, my two <laughs> next 
favorite light painters. Oh, can you explain what's going on here? I mean, talk about teaching uh, and, and, and beauty. Uh, look at this beautifulness. Mate, that was, um, that's my youngest. And uh, we're doing Zoom. He's full circles at full tilt um, until he fell off. And uh, yeah, having a lot of fun, mate. We, um, we do, we love to get away. We've got a, a four-wheel drive and a camping trailer, so we love to uh, love to get away as a family when we can and uh, and just spend weekend away. And uh, I try and sneak in a bit of photography, but you, you do feel a little bit guilty uh, leaving, the, leaving the wife and the kids at the camp to go do some photography. But, um, yeah, mate, both, my, both of my boys are, um, uh, are just awesome. My wife's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it's just paradise, mate. It's just, I love it. You know, and and that's that's what keeps bringing us back. That's what keeps fueling. You know, my creativity is is the ones my inner circle, my loved ones. Um, they support me. Uh, they support me in this journey. I all like you. I came from a corporate background. Um, I was in high pressure medical device sales, which I mean, I was in the OR doing uh, helping, assisting with brain surgery, um, neurosurgery, and there's not much other than cardiac surgery that is more tense than uh, neurosurgery. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so I went from a 180 to there. I said, you know what? I don't, I think that there's more to life than this. I think, again, this is what quarantine maybe has taught us is that, you know, uh, put things in perspective. Uh, if you're not yeah. happy in life, if you're not having fun at your job, if you're not having fun in life, yeah. do what it takes. Have the courage to make a change, um, a change for the better. Uh, you won't regret it. I promise. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. No, my, my wife, um, we've been together, she'll slap me, uh, 20, <laughs> 24 years. So, yeah, we've been together 24 years. Um, and, and she's, yeah, she, people say, oh, you know, you, you meet your soulmate and all this sort of stuff. Um, she's, yeah, she's more than that. Um, she is my best friend and she's my, she's my greatest supporter. And um, if I'm, if I'm being a dick and, um, being an idiot, she'll tell me. Yeah. Like she'll, she'll tell me down hard, and that's great. That's what I need. Like yeah. that, that's fantastic. But um, any idea that I've got, or I just say to her, look, I, I, you know, for 25 years she's been putting up with me for 15, going, I need to go camping. I need to go, need to go bush. I need to. Yep, yeah, cool. No worries. And straight away she's like, yeah, cool. No worries. Pick a date. Where you go. And um, and that's brilliant, you know. So whether it's a solo or um, or with a couple of mates or or anything like that, she's always given me that ability to to do my own thing, as well as you know we do our own um, own family family thing as well. So it's um yeah it's brilliant. It's um um yeah I treasure her like nothing on earth, mate. And uh, yeah, and it's really funny the last last probably 15 years we've really seen um a connection more than what we had before and that that just keeps building and building and building and uh yeah it's uh it's a connection that uh, it's hard to explain but um yeah it's yeah but i love it i love it it's yeah. great you know it's a it's a great segue uh you know light painting, uh, nighttime photography in general. If you're light painting or not, astrophotography uh, only can happen at night. Um, yeah. Sometimes you have to wait till 2.45 a.m. before the galactic center opens. And what are you doing for full hours? That's not how I really started light painting, but if you're a significant other uh, to a nighttime photographer, that's not an easy path. And you know, hats off and hearts go out to all of those supporters and loved ones out there that are uh, helping these artists um, make coffee, make tea, um, oh. you know, uh, yeah. having somewhere to snuggle with at the end of the night when you're frozen and, you know, <laughs> get out of here, you're cold. And it's like, no, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No, and, and that's the thing. And it's probably why, um, why I stuck with light painting the most is that um, I'm able to, able to sneak away and, and do you know, four or five hour session and it's, um, you know, kids and kids and wife might be in bed and uh, they're not, you know, if I was a musician, that might be a different story. You're not going to have that ability to have big, long sessions of, uh, of what you, what you want to do creatively and uh, without impacting your family. So 
like painting, I can just go out in the studio and come back in at midnight and, you know, and uh, hopefully don't wake people up as I, as I walk in the door. But, um, so, yeah, so that's important. It's, um, yeah, it's gold, mate. It's, uh, I love it. Love it. I do too, you know, and I'm just, I'm seeing all this and, and it's, this is such an amazing conversation, Ben. I'm, I'm looking at the, these pieces of art actually up on your shelf and they look like to be feathers. There's a dream catcher uh, on the, up on the right and then there's three yep. feathers standing. Do, do yep. feathers or birds, do they, do they mean something significant to you? Um, is that your yeah. spirit? Are you an eagle? Yeah, right, right. That's actually, that's good pickup. That's, um, this little uh, little space that I'm in, that was um, with the restrictions, my wife um, 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 ended up working from home. So we ripped this up like in a weekend and uh, gave her a little space in the spare room to to um, to do her work for the day. And um, so that's actually all her mate, hers, mate. She's into the into the crystals and uh, and all that sort of um, all that sort of these stuff. Uh, oh yeah, man. <laughs> all these oh, things. Look. <laughs> I happen to be dating a full company. Uh, my, my my girlfriend has a full crystal company. Beautiful. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Put crystals.com. <laughs> okay. You need to message me that, mate. And I'm uh, I'm going to get my wife on today. And um, yeah, no, nah, it's um, I look at it, I look at it, some of them help, and she would she would shoot me, but I look at them as light painting tools. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it. that really. Cool, <laughs> but I've never, yeah, I've never well, gone. I have, I've totally done light paintings with, uh, with different crystals. In fact, look at this big long bar crystal here. So you talk about a light bar. All you have to do, and actually the diameter of this fits into the kayo, not the sing, not two, but single. You can do, you can put that in the kayo, and so now you've got a crystal light bar, um, to blade with. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to talk to your wife more about this. Trust me, I'm all about light painting with crystals. Um, here's, here's some smaller ones. This is selenite. I'm not exactly sure what it does. It clears bad energy. Um, it seems to work for me. Um, I actually got a new MacBook. I'm actually starting some uh, new uh, video light painting software. Um, and so I needed a new, uh, I needed a new engine in my MacBook. My old, this one right here is really outdated compared to what is out there now and, and I just needed to make the move and so I've got I've got her crystals surrounding the, the package of the MacBook I haven't opened it yet uh, but I'm opening it as soon as we get done here and the crystals are infusing it with abundance and creativity and, and, and joy uh, as we speak <laughs> no, I, I'm quite happy about the feathers and stuff but um, yeah eagle uh, the Aussie uh, wedge-tailed eagle is uh, is my favourite animal in the world, mate. It's uh, they uh, they put a um, in Australia. They are pretty much endangered. They pick up um, a lot of poison and stuff like that. Um, mm. Yeah, that um, we poison over here with 1080, which is just lethal. It's horrible, and they they do that for wild dogs. But what they don't count on is the toll on the native. Um, native birds of prey. Um, farmers um, farmers cull uh, wedge-tailed eagles because they take lambs and all that sort of stuff and uh, it's just terrific and um, so yeah the wedge-tailed eagle mate if I see a wedge-tailed eagle it, it doesn't matter whether I've got a bee somewhere or it's usually out bush but got a deadline or what that's it I'm pulling over yeah. I, um, yeah, it's, the camera's coming out and uh, Quite often when I'm traveling, I've got the big lens on ready to go. Um, my wife's usually holding that like a baby and then <laughs> just yeah, waiting yeah. to pull over, you know. Like, yeah. So, yeah, the wedge tailed eagle is um, made uh, they're magnificent birds. Amazing, amazing. I don't know that species uh, right offhand, but I'm definitely going to research this. I'll put a picture of it up uh, as, as we edit this, this podcast. Um, yeah, mate, I love it. I love it. Uh, we have a few feathers here. Uh, there's, it's very spiritual in, in my house, uh, like I just mentioned, and so we often uh, have ceremony and spread uh, smoke or the spirit um, around. Uh, it's a very Native American, uh, where I'm from, uh, kind of tradition, many traditions actually. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love that. Uh, I love that. My my dad actually, uh, his spirit animal is a hawk. We have uh, these uh, smaller hawks. Uh, around here, uh, and so 
I uh, I'm very very keen to the bird, uh, the eagles and the hawk. Now you um you do a lot of DIY. You make a lot of your own tools with a light painting, don't you? Um, I do, I do, and I don't. I have probably what's called uh, gear acquisition acquisition syndrome, uh, and so I have. I mean, I have baskets full of stuff yes. and i have an imagination that is <laughs> never ending and so you can imagine uh i've pretty much used absolutely every single thing in my house that i already own i've already i've used that in one form or another to do a light painting either of it as a still life or using light to shine through it around it uh refract it um yeah i do a lot of that um i'm not very handy like you are so as far as like um, pipe fittings and like stuffing fiber optics in there and making my own fiber optic whips. I tend not to do that. Um, if I could go run and show you the plexis I've made, my, you would absolutely fall off your chair right now. So I'm not going to show that. They literally oh, yeah. are, they're not cracked. Um, yeah. But I tried to glue them into the universal connector. So I took, I took a universal a light painting brush connector and I sawed a blade slot where it would sit down in yep. because I looked at, I looked at what, how they, how they're made. And I'm like, well, the, obviously you reverse engineer it. How do I, how can I make this myself for not so much money? Cause I, I don't have any money. You know I mean? Like I'm very, you know, I, I'm, I'd rather create art than yeah. And so I stuffed it down in there and then I, and then I turned it around upside down and I, I poured epoxy to, yep. to, to, to glue it in, right? Because this is how I was told. And literally, uh, the epoxy is just draining down the plexiglass. I didn't put any stops. I didn't put a, like, I didn't put a, a filter or wood. Because, you know, those yep. lightning brush connectors have ridges, or ribs yep. inside of them, which is nice. And if you put a little bit of a stop, then the glue will stop there, and it'll just build up, and it'll freeze. It'll solidify like this. Well, of course, I didn't remember to do that on one of them, and it's just a big mess, and I it was just a nightmare. And so I am oh, yeah. all of my stuff. Uh, I wish that I was more handy when it comes to this. Um, if you have any if you have any uh, tips and tricks on making anything, uh, please tell us because I want to have more people light paint. Um, so just on that with the epoxy. <laughs> <laughs> you should see mine, mate. They're just uh, absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I've just got a universal. I've got a universal tape to it because it flies off when you're in moments of passion. Um, yes. So I'll get rid of that. Brilliant but, way to put it. Moments of passion. I love it. <laughs> you love that? Yeah, I do. So let's we'll see that. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Is, is that engraved? Yeah. 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 Wow, what a beautiful design too. Did you did you come up with that one? Wow. No, that was just a tribal thing that I pulled off of offline. Sure. Um, but people sand the blades and do all that sort of stuff. But this was an early, earlier piece. I'll try and I've just found the end of the tape, so I'll, while we're chatting, we'll, I'll undo it. But in the earlier piece, I thought, what if we engraved it instead of <laughs> instead of sanding it? But what it gave what it gave is that engraving as you move it actually made it like uh, like almost real textured like a like individual lines. Yes. So that's only, that's only about a millimeter deep. Yeah. But it took like two hours, you know. But that's what you know that that's just yeah that's just an afternoon with a bit of music on and just yeah trace it on there and just get to work with the Dremel and uh, and just play with it. But awesome. I'll show you. I'll show you a message with the texture that that happens when you engrave because um, yeah. light, light bounces over the engraving and um, yeah, it works really well. But what I was going to show you is the end. Yes. Do that. Okay, so that's epoxy, but what I put a little bit of epoxy with the fitting, glue the fitting to a, a board then put the blade in and then with a syringe fill the fitting from the top okay so it's over a couple of days so once yeah. you've got the fitting on the board it's not going to move anywhere then you put the blade in the next day and fill it up leave it for another day and then just break it off of the board 
bit of yeah. a sand on the bottom and then you're, you're good to go. But I was using um, that's like two two fittings in one type thing. So that's the early, early, early day. That's probably it's probably the first half a dozen blades that I've sort of made. So pretty uh, doesn't have to be cute and cuddly, you know. Like who cares? As long as as long as light shines through it, that's all that matters, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's a bit of a tip for you. Um, I early days of the blades. Yeah. So we've got a mail. I found this the other day um, when I was pulling out the other stuff, so I thought I'd show you that. Oh, so what this is? Yeah. You can hear it? Yeah. Okay. So this is when RGB was really expensive. Like I couldn't justify fifty bucks for an RGB kit. So I thought, how am I going to get something with color changes? So Inside there is little sections. Oh. And then you've got coloured acrylic discs. Yes. So I wanted something <laughs> wanted something completely random. So every time you used it, it was different. Awesome. So as the light shines through, those discs sort of move back and forth at will. And it might be a, it might be a yellow and a blue, which gives you green. It might be a blue, it might be a yellow, it might be a red. It might be a, ye a yellow and a red, which gives you orange, all in the one one movement. So that was a that was a fun little fun little um, little tool that I um, that I made. Um, so I pulled I pulled that out and uh, actually took that out with me the other night. So uh, it was fun to get that out again. It was cool. It's good. Oh. So. I'll, I'll do the same um, in the early days on my Insta feed um, that you can probably see a couple of these, um, but I'll make sure that you've, you've got one. But, yeah, before the RGB, you know, all this all this computerised stuff where you can program, Yeah. you know, that's 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 what I come up with. It's, um, yeah, a little bit, of, little bit of fun on a Saturday. Mate, that's <laughs> bloody brilliant. That is so brilliant. You know, uh, Rod Evans uh, down in Australia, he's also a DIY master. I had him on season one, and you guys are two peas in a pod. I mean, I love this. There is so much inspiration and innovation, really, uh, coming out of Australia. I just love it. I just love it. Yeah, he, he creates a light painting tool out of anything. It's, yeah, it's so cool. Um, yeah. I don't get a lot of time these days. Um, so I've got a big wish list of stuff that I want to buy. Um, and slowly, slowly chip away at that as I as I can sort of save for it. But um, yeah, blading. Uh, I'm trying to attach different stuff to the blading systems now, and um, and see what comes from that. But um, yeah, the creative DIY days, as I call them, uh, DIY days. They uh, they're pretty seldom, pretty seldom these days. But um, but yeah, good fun. I love it. It's good fun, you know, and it's cheap. It's a cheap, good way to get into this without having to spend a lot of money. I mean, you're already investing in a camera. Um, doesn't have to be a very good camera. Everyone keeps saying, you know, what kind of DSLR do you shoot with? It's like, well, you know, I started with a G10 Canon Power Shot that was from 2002. You know, I mean, like, you know, as long as you know, as long as you have bold mode or if you have 30 seconds, you just told us that each one of your blades, these beautiful pieces of work that we were showing earlier. They happen in six seconds or 12 seconds or 18 seconds. And so most cameras, especially these days, for not that much money, can do that. Um, so That's right. Um, yeah, every, every camera in the world, including phones, um, pretty much now, you can do 30 seconds, 5.6. Um, you know, in a workshop, that's what we set it to. Yeah. Um, get them underway at 30 seconds, 5.6, ISO 1 or 200. And light paint to that, you know. Yeah. And you don't need like I've got got lots of torches, lots of lots of really uh, really nice bit of kit. But the first orb that I've spun was with a tiny little one dollar torch attached to you know that string you use to tie up a roast chicken. Yes. I'm tied to that, mate. And yeah, and away you go. And that was my first orb. Awesome. And awesome. You don't have to you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on to get into light painting. You can just whatever's around the house, shine a bung a torch into it, shine um, some light through it, and wave it in front of the camera. Um, it's 
Yeah, it's so simple. So simple. You can get it carried away with the tools and stuff later. You don't have to, you know, you don't buy the biggest, biggest, most expensive car when you first learn to drive. So you don't need to do that with cameras and you don't need to do that with light painting either. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, mate, are you hearing this this banging in the background of my, can you hear external? I can hear yeah, yep. Let's push pause just real quick. We have a beautiful thing in quarantine where I live downtown Portland, Oregon, but to uh, attribute to all of the service workers and the hospital workers that are dealing with uh, patients uh, in COVID, this is our way to say thank you. And so everyone's banging on their own pots and pans out of their window. Um, yeah, so uh, it's not very ideal for the podcast. Uh, I'm just going to push pause here. Uh, we'll let this slide. I didn't think about that when I started at six or at 10 30 your time I was like oh, I guess uh, we're gonna hit that I didn't yeah. I didn't think about that one so that's okay oh, we yeah. might have to edit that out we might not I might leave it in there who really cares you know I'm not into over producing these things I think the like I said before just having a beautiful honest authentic conversation is really the goal of this and so a few pots and pans for COVID uh is not a big deal <laughs> Mate, we can we can we can add to it. It's all good. It's, yeah. that's, that's all. That's really that's really cool way of uh, um, honouring those uh, honouring the frontline workers, mate. Oh, that's that's really good. Really cool. They're putting themselves in danger every day for other people. Um, you know, just like the military forces, you have to you have to respect someone who's willing to. Uh, you know, take in, take harm for another person, another human being. A lot of people don't have the courage to do that. And my heart actually goes out to all of them. Um, and so we just had Memorial Day here in, in the United States. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm very, very, very anti-war, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pro soldier. They're actually out there putting their life on the line. Uh, so I don't believe, you know, that they should be fighting wars. I feel like that, they could be servicing our country in better ways, but they're still doing it. And you have to respect that. You absolutely have to respect them. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's, it allows you allows you to live the life that you're living and um, do stuff like this. Yeah. It's, um, it's that simple. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. Um, I, um, when I was talking about that third, my first orb, um, yeah. <laughs> It's quite funny. Like I started with a torch on a string, and um, I've still got it somewhere. I've kept it, but um, I couldn't find it. But, um, but basically, that was my second second awesome. tool. Awesome. That's just IKEA lights. <laughs> Amazing. IKEA okay, lights. And you yeah. wired that together. You soldered those ends together, and you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just soldered a, a cord on it. And then that was my my version of the orb tool. So that's a that's a triple. Cool. Nice. And yeah, so that gives you three three orbs in one. Yeah. I've got, got enough to do four of those, but man, it's a workout. It's super heavy. Like you don't you want to spin one or two orbs a night and that's it. You're done. Yes. You're um, killing you. Absolutely killing you. So yeah. But I use um, use the ball the light tool now um, for all my orbs, um, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, um, but uh, yeah, that's mate. I do yeah. I play around with crystal balls a little bit um, in the studio. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's funny because I uh, love uh, your lens ball shots, um, and I want to talk to you about them. Um, I also shoot lens balls. I don't often post in my social about them, um, but you can get really, 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 really creative with them. Uh, I've often, I often paint in, in upside down because when you look, when you shoot through the lens ball, your image will be upside down and then blading or something that's abstract, not that big a deal. But when you're painting jellyfish or when you're painting anything with an orientation from the top bottom, you have to take that into consideration. Um, so let's talk about this one, mate. Um, uh, wow, what a, what, a, what a banger this one is. Can you tell me the light sources and you can tell me where you were? Because this one is amazing. Oh, thanks, mate. The, um, 
the light painting tool is uh, that's a light flute. Okay. So the light flute was um, that was created by uh, one of my mates, Gavin, down here in Adelaide. And um, so Dennis was then selling them on his shop. Um, but the orb, orb in the middle of that is a second crystal ball sitting behind the first one. Oh. So you just, yeah, you align that. Yeah, to get a focal point, it's, it's oh. mad. Trying to get depth of field. It's, um, it, initially, it was taking me about an hour to set up. Yeah. Um, and me with the OCD, I reckon that one's a little bit off centre as well. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, so, it doesn't matter. <laughs> predominantly, I use a little alloy plate about 50 millimetres wide, uh, two inches wide, with two tiny little holes in it. And that sits on a, centred on a tripod. So you put two crystal balls on there nice and level. And the spacing of that is even. So it gives you that effect each time. But the interesting thing, the the reflection in the fir in the front crystal ball is upside down. Yeah. So the all that light painting is happening above. Um, so that fir the biggest crystal ball there um, is what you said is opposite. So the reflection is the flips the image, but the one inside of that is up the right way. So basically, then I just like to work with how the light reflects, uh, reflects, and yep. um, and create a pattern that that um, that I like, and that comes down to your height and your distance away from the crystal balls with your light painting and all that sort of stuff. You can get in really close. I've knocked them off so many times. Oh, um, it is, yeah. You get so I, I have cement floors here in my studio. I live, I live and work in my studio. And uh, I want to show you something. Uh, watch this. Um, <laughs> look, look at this. I don't know how you can see. Oh, this is as big as my head. Do you see this? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, that's this awesome. thing is hundred <laughs> millimeters. I can barely hold it. This thing is eight inches wide, like the like the human head. Oh, and yeah. it comes on this stand. It, yep. There's like a major stand here. And so I, I have three different size lens balls. Um, and I just did a tutorial as this massive one is going to be the sun. And my two little ones are going to be planets orbiting them uh, nice. around it. And so I'm gonna do a stop motion animation by the time this episode airs, I hope to have that one done, and that's gonna be my that's gonna be my goal to get this done before then. It's been very challenging. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you this massive one. I found it on on Amazon. Everyone can get it, but it's it's I think eight eight inches uh, wide in diameter, and it weighs about I don't know six kilos. Um, it's, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty heavy. It's a, it's a pretty heavy one. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. But so uh, yeah, a little solution for you so you don't have to um, don't have to paint upside down. If you had two the same size and butt them up together, oh. it would actually your light painting will actually be up the right way. Oh, that's awesome. Um, another thing I've done is actually just invert my camera and shoot it inverted. So my camera's my tripod is inverted or upside down and so my camera is upside down on a tripod and so then that way you can actually shoot it that way the problem with that is that now you have your lens ball on the top of your frame and you can see the stand or if you actually crop it just to the edge of the ball it still doesn't look like that and so you know again i want to be as authentic as i can in my art and it means a lot to me to do it right in camera and so i've just taught myself to paint upside down um but i love i love the i love the double crystal ball especially this one where it's inside of the other one i've never seen that before i've never done that before i want to try this uh this is super inspiring to me um it um, took a little time to get the depth of field right so that both were both were in focus yeah. and 
distance away from the away from the balls with the lens and all that. I tried every lens that I own, and there's only one focal point and one distance away with that one lens that I can get both sharp. Um, so it's all pretty measured out now. I can set it up in about 20 minutes. I'm ready to go. Um, but it's just mentally knowing that distance. I know exactly where everything's got to be, and uh, then just just yeah shoot a few frames and go that's not quite right and you just tweak the focus a little bit and then away you go once it's set it usually stays up for three or four days and i'll just do just do crystal ball light painting for three or four yeah. days and then uh i'll have to pack it up and, and away you go again so yeah good good fun i love it, it. it's great fun mate and there was a time especially in my younger uh uh part of, of light painting i was stuck inside i didn't really I, don't, I wasn't a tube light painter at the time. I wasn't working with any models. And so, you know, you get creative in your own house. And when you have a lens ball and you're like, oh my God, this looks like, you know, you can make things in a snow globe. You can make an image contained. And where it led me was to start uh, painting eyeballs or eyes. I really feel like the eyes tells everything. Um, it's a window to the soul in the Chinese proverb. And so this is a turtle eye. I, I, I painted um, through the lens ball. Um, and so I got into doing eyeballs. Uh, here's another one uh, with an iris. I guess it's, it's probably in the wall behind me. That one, that one actually was my first uh, print. We talked about that in the beginning of the, of the, of the picture or the podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I love my lens ball. I think that uh, it's a fun, fun, fun way to do it. Um, I have seen, uh, I, you know, I'm not really into these Facebook groups, but I did join a lens ball, crystal ball photography group. And a lot of them are doing um, digital monitor or an iPad. And they're yeah. shooting that through the lens ball, which can be really cool patterns. Um, I, I played, around, played yeah. around with that a little bit. I did one with um, um, when Chris Cornell passed away I did one um, and played around with uh, with an image of him on um, on a laptop um, through a crystal ball and yeah it's got got its merits but it's I'd rather create from low to go um, and um, you know my macro stuff I use um, I do use a laptop with a gradient uh, in behind some of those just to give a nice color pop um, but other than that I try and try and do everything um, manually, um, especially with the light painting. The macro stuff's obviously a different field, but, um, yeah. but yeah, good time. Do you feel like the different um, areas, uh, applications of photography, do they, do they sort of all play into each other? Like your knowledge from macro helps you light painting, your light painting helps your landscapes, and your landscapes help your astro. Are they, I mean, it's all photography. Um, it's, all, it's all photography. I think, um, I think landscapes you you've got to have a have a, a your visions in your visions in front of you in the landscape but you you got to have what you what output that you want from that landscape so whether you shoot it from high down low or lead in lines and all that sort of stuff come into it um the macro is um you know positioning so what details of what you're shooting that you want to get but the light painting is you've got to have the vision to start with, then you've got to create the vision, and then you've got to get it as an output as well. So I think light painting, um, you know, get a get a pretty landscape and anyone can shoot that, you know, and make it make something that's worth printable. But light painting, it, it comes from within you, and you, you've got to get that out, and then you've got to capture it how your mind sees it um, so it's just the next level and um, and that's why I sort of um, you see um, a lot of new people online into light painting that you know as you sort of progress through Eric Paré is a classic for this so you see someone new to light painting you're always mate that's sick that is awesome blah, blah, blah. Just give them advice if they seek it but always say that's awesome you know, yeah. and um, and praise them for for what they're doing. Um, not everyone can have the experience. Like 
you're probably the same. You look at Eric and Kim's work and you go, oh, my God, it's just surreal. It's just magic. Um, it's really beautiful. I'd like to do that one day. Mm. So when you when you go and, and try it, you're not going to get the same results. Yeah. But you've got to look at it and go, okay, what have you got? What have I learned from it? What can I do different next time to continue learning? And um, and we've got to treat everyone in that community in the community exactly the same, um, and praise them for the work that they're doing, and, and encourage them to keep going. And um, I think that's important. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's funny. I get a lot of people message, you know, and ask, oh, this image, how did you do that? Sometimes, you know, sometimes you you sort of think, well. I've worked, worked hard. I don't really want to tell you, but you point them in the right direction anyway yeah. um, so that they can go away and learn. And you always leave a conversation like that with, if you've got any questions, just don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Because then they that leaves the door open that they can come back and go, okay, I've tried this. What do you think of this? And what could I do? They're all learning. Like, they're learning. And uh, I... I've learned what I've known in light painting and photography by asking questions, and uh, I'll continue to do that because um, I want to keep keep learning. And um, so I think if someone – good advice is uh, if anyone asks you a question, answer it with all, all respect. Like You've got to answer it and get back to them and, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, you've got to help people out, and that's that's – community that's that magic word again community um i couldn't agree yeah. more mate you know and if, if i'm not actually just honestly putting it right in my description of my post like these are the torches i used this is my camera settings this is where we were this is why i chose the colors i did this is why i positioned the model where i did this is where i shot it from a low angle shooting up because i wanted her to be more of a subject you know i wanted her to be more of a focal point i tried to put as much in there as possible I hope people feel comfortable asking me questions on any of my art. Um, it can get quite complex. And I think that the complexity, honestly, in some ways, um, maybe pushes some people away and that's going to happen. Um, and they're just, they're just like, I don't understand how this works. And I, I, don't, I just don't get it. Um, uh, but I've, I've like you, I am an open book. Um, I, am willing to share my techniques and anything uh, on my YouTube channel uh, on this uh, with other guests. Anyone that wants to DM me, please feel free. I am a huge resource uh, for all that. I hope to be starting a live, uh, just a, maybe a live weekly question and answer for some of the community, and that could really help. Um, so yes, I totally agree. I think that people that have um, experience in photography and light painting, um, there is a bit of, uh, not obligation, but there there is a bit of uh, willingness to help those that are starting because we all had to start somewhere, and you know we all making beautiful images right off the you know right off the bat, and and that's something I keep saying periodically on the on the on the on the podcast here and, and in my art is that anyone that says the light painting is easy is not maybe being truthful to you. This is very very difficult. This is a culmination of technical photography. This is a culmination of your photography eye. This is a culmination of having a vision of art and light painting. This is a technical side of light painting, of getting the right torches and the right luminosity and the right brightness and the right color scheme and then executing. And then actually something that we talked about that's so important to you is movement. Actually sure. being able to take all of that and now be able to move through the frame as in a performance, a live performance from the time that shutter starts, from the time that shutter stops, that is your performance. That is your creation. Um, and so you couldn't have put it any better. And I hope that when people see this, uh, people will reach out to you, Ben, as a huge resource. Um, reach out to me. Feel free uh, to ask me anything um, about creativity, photography, light painting, anything. Um, ben, I have to ask you. Uh, I ask every guest, do you have one song to add to the master Spotify playlist? Do you use music during your light painting? It doesn't have to be a song that you actually paint to. It could be a song that just motivates you in general. I do. My, uh, my neighbors probably hate me uh, for my music beating out in the, out in the studio. Um, 
Yeah, I try and um, it's a bit of a mixture. It depends on on the feel. So, um, mate, um, Pearl Jam is my favourite band. Um, I chill out to um, I chill out to Pink Floyd. Um, but I also listen to um, a little bit of um, been getting into the Aussie hip hop um, uh, lately. So we've got a, a, a crew um, called the Hilltop Hoods who are from Adelaide, from here, that are doing things worldwide. Um, so those guys, um, they, they're on my playlist quite a bit. Um, but the song that really gets me cranking if, uh, if I'm having a bit of a slow day and I sort of don't really want to be out in the studio is yeah. um, a Canadian band, three-piece band, tight, tight as a drum, uh, called The Tea Party. They've been around forever. Um, so the tea party, mate. Um, I got to pick one of theirs. So uh, go with, jeez, uh, go with writings on the wall. Got it. That that song just cranked from from the get go. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, the Spotify playlist is under my name. If anyone wants to join uh, that, it's a it's a very very eclectic. Uh, just yep. like our community is, which is beautiful. Um, if it was all the same, it wouldn't. It would not be nearly as interesting. And so I am super happy for that addition. I cannot wait to light paint to that soon. Um, ben, it's been an amazing time. I've got one final question for you, my friend. If you could turn back five years and you could sit yourself down just like this, and you had five minutes or a few things to really go back and say. This is what, you know, looking back and maybe seeing the struggles and the challenges you've faced in the last five years and the successes you've had, what would you what would you tell yourself? Uh, what, what advice would you give yourself about light painting or photography or anything? Probably three words. Just do it. Yeah. Just do just it. Squash, just try it. I just got to squash the self-doubt, yeah. squash the fear, and, uh, you know, uh, it's um, had a meant so much um, fun, um, but yeah, I uh, I've got a landing page on a on a website. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not on socials as much as what I'd like to be. Um, so I need to, you know, I'm, I love the community, but I, I just don't spend time hovering uh, hovering on socials. So I need to get that inspiration back. Um, but yeah, five years ago, me, I, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, just that fear, just, just don't, don't listen to what your head's telling you and just go with the heart, go with the gut and, uh, and just do it and don't give a shit about what anyone else thinks about it. Just do it for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, that's what I would, that's what I would tell myself, um, it, uh, yeah, just don't listen to the fear and go yeah. and um, go and have some fun, definitely. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant, mate. Um, well, Ben, can can you give us the address to your landing page? Can we can uh, we find you on Facebook under Ben Woods? Um, anywhere else we can find you? So my, um, I post most of my stuff as public on my personal Facebook page. Um, yeah. So lot, there are lots of my um, photos sort of hang out there. Um, under mine, um, Instagram, Ben D Woods, um, okay. or Word. Um, so yeah, Insta, I've only been on there sort of five years. Um, but yeah, um, probably prefer Instagram over Facebook to be quite honest, because yeah. you, you look at the photos and, uh, get the inspiration from there. Um, but yeah, my landing page is bendingwoods.com. Okay. Um, so chuck that up, hopefully, and I'll uh, I'll set it as a goal, mate. It's it's been sitting there for five years um, and slowly evolved to a landing page over that time. But um, I'm hoping by the end of the year um, that that'll be a fully functioning website um, for for what I do, um, and that's a you know photography in general. Um, I've got a, got a lot of resources. I'm a bit old school. I've got a lot of resources in a, in a folder that I, that I share with people. I do a bit of one-on-one -on -one tutorial, been starting to do a bit of that. So it's, yeah, it's all really old school, so I need to get that online and, you know, 
let people have a look on the website and uh, and start creating a bit of a resource base on there instead. Um, I think um, it's costing me a fortune in printing at the moment, so <laughs> you can't keep printing stuff for the yeah. sake of the environment and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, so so yeah, hopefully I'll have by the end of the year. Um, hopefully I'll have the website up and running fully. So we'll see how that see how that pans out. You can check in with me in the on the 29th of December, mate. <laughs> I sure will and honestly Ben I will check in hopefully before then just to see how you're doing maybe have a quick five to ten combo if you're up for that I would love to reconnect with you mate it's been an amazing podcast you can tell by the smile on my face it's been non-stop uh, going through your art getting to know you um, as an artist uh, again I couldn't have picked a, honestly a better guest someone that doesn't really do a lot of social posting but yet is a, an amazing, amazing, phenomenal photographer and artist. And here we are getting to know you. And this is exactly why the podcast is here. So thank you, mate. Hey, you're a champion. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, a little, little bit, been a little bit nervous, but uh, no, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure having a chat, mate. It's, um, it's what it should be all about. And uh, yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing uh, with the podcast and uh, and the YouTube episodes, mate. It's it's fantastic, and uh, I think it's important for the community that uh, you know it keeps evolving and uh, and keep stuff like this keeps coming out. And uh, yeah, it's brilliant, fantastic. Well, mate, we'll see you in cyberspace, and I'll give you a call maybe in a month or two. Absolutely, no worries at all. Thanks, Aaron. It's been a pleasure, yeah. mate. Yeah, likewise. Cheers.